Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. It's, um, <laughs> I keep messing this up, I don't know why, but recently I've been doing um, a heavy album for a company and what I did, I quad-tracked the guitars, so I recorded them for the same part, the same rhythmic part, four times. I used an electric down-tuned guitar and into an amp and what happened is, when I was playing it was great, but what was happening in between, it was very rhythmic. Um, so there's a lot of gaps and sort of staccato rhythms, so short, choppy little rhythms. And in those gaps, I noticed it was developing a little bit of floor noise. So what I started to do was automate that noise out that was in between. And that was great. And it actually gave me perhaps more of a choppy rhythm, which I loved. Now, one thing, one word of caution with this sort of creating silences in gaps is depending on the style of music, the genre of music, I think you've got to be careful. Say you had sort of atmospheric or you had a jazzy guitar part or a bluesy guitar or um, a synth line with a delay or a reverb tail. If you create a silence in between each one, you've got to be careful that it's in keeping with it, if you see what I mean, because it start, can start to sound slightly unnatural doing it. I think certain styles of music, it really works. Like, this was really heavy music and it actually created that sort of very precise rhythm that I was looking for. So it was great for that. And I'll tell you what else is great for. Say you got some dialogue, you got some speech and you used an audio interface that was slightly noisy or the mic was slightly noisy or there was just a bit of background noise when you weren't talking and you thought, I want to get rid of that how can I do that quickly? And this is what I came across. For, for ages, or in fact, probably years, I've been using automation. So can you see, this is what I'm talking about here. It's in between each bit of audio. You get this slight sort of floor noise. And depending on what equipment you're using, so if you're using analog equipment, it could be something you want to keep in there. But sometimes it's something we want to remove. So I use my, a lot of times I, I use the range selection tool, which is, well, it's two on the keypad to, to get the range selection tool, but we'll get into that in a second. So I've got my audio track, and for, for ages I've been using the automation. So I go to the left bottom of my audio event, or not, not audio event, audio track, should I say, or track, and I click on, you get this little triangle appears, you click on there and it creates an automation lane. I think we've looked at this before, and then literally I've used my line tool, so you've got your line tool at the top there as well. And I've just literally drawn a line down for a fade out and a line back up. And then deleted a bit of information in the middle perhaps. And that's created for me a quick, pretty quick little fade I've made. So a fade out and a fade in. So anything in the middle here is going to be completely silent because the fade is going to drop in automation to zero and then come back to the original um, original setting I was at. And you can, oh, I'll, t I'll tell you what, one thing I forgot to say, you can move this around by lassoing. So left click off the audio event, keep left click down to make sure all of these edit points are highlighted. And then you can literally left click, keep left click down, move it wherever you want, even with my computer not behaving itself very well keep left click down and press alt. The key is keeping left click down, pressing alt, then letting go and left click. That copies the edit event you've made. So now I've got two of those and I could literally go on. So here I could put the event, the, the edit again. Now, I'll just undo those quick. That was great. But as I say, this thing I was working on recently had loads and I was ending up with four tracks with literally hundreds of edits it was it was starting to get messy and a little bit cumbersome to work like that the other issue what issue the other option you've got should i say is to manually take away these bits of floor noise by pressing three on your keyboard and getting the scissor tool what i would stipulate with this perhaps is taking snap off if you've got snap on do you remember it jumps to if you've got it set to quantize or bar it will it's it becomes a bit harder to find the edit you want a natural edit now so you press three for the um, scissor tool and you can literally choose the areas you want to delete press the um, press the scissor tool and then delete the
the sections in between just by highlighting them and pressing delete on the keyboard. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And you've also, this is cool as well because by creating separate audio events, you've got the little fade in and fade outs at the top and the bottom of each audio event, which can be quite cool to get rid of any pops or any, um, so it, it's a natural fade rather than it sounding like just stopping. So that's quite cool. But again, I'll just undo that a second. That got to the point where um, perhaps if I was, I had say 30 edit points on a track and I wanted to move it somewhere else or I wanted to get to something quickly without then gluing them together or working, then working on the fades again, it became um, a bit cumbersome to work with. It's all right on one track, but say you've got a load of guitar tracks or a load of whatever, it doesn't matter what the instrument is, a load of tracks, it can start to get a bit messy. So I started to use this um, silence option in Cubase under audio processes. But to speed that up, what I thought I would do is create a shortcut on my keyboard and literally I within week, well, within a week, I was using it all the time and it, it has saved me a load of time. I have to say, as far as um, efficiency goes, it's been really good. It, it's, it's definitely worked for me. So it's worth trying it out to see what you think. So I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna go to um, key commands. So edit key commands. And I'm gonna look up here in my search tool. I'm gonna look at silence. So I'll type silence up there and we're done. And it's gone to it for me. Now, can you see it's highlighted here under my processes silence? You can hit return again if you if it goes to because I think there's insert silence as well. And you've got to be careful with that one because that will actually insert and actually change the length of your track rather than what we want to do, which is take the audio event, select a bit from the audio event, and just silence any background noise. So this is what we've got to make sure we're on processes and silence. Now, it's telling me at the moment I haven't got a key command for this. So I'm just going to, where it says type in key, I'm just going to left click there. And I'm going to, the one I use now is Alt and S or Command and S if you're on a Mac, I think, but Alt and S. And it's still not assigned yet until I click this assign key. So now when I click assign, it's telling me it's used for edit, insert, silence. Ah, I used it for something different. I don't want that insert silence, so I'm going to click assign. The insert silence, that's what I was telling you before. Be careful with that one because that will actually, if you want to create a bit of silence, it'll actually shift the audio event across to do that. So we want processes, silence, and then OK. So Alt and S together, in theory now, should get rid of this bit of floor noise. So let's try it out. I'm going to use the object selection, sorry, the range selection by pressing two. Oh, we're already, we've already made the one from before. So let's, let's try it out, fingers crossed. So Alt S, there you go. And can you see that change the audio event itself? So if we do it on this one, say we want this little bit of tail here. Sorry, my computer again is not happy with me today. And that looks pretty good. So anything in this area is we're going to come completely silent without this tiny, can you see the little bit of floor noise there? Without that bit of floor noise. Now, one thing that I'll mention as well, can you see at the top here, I've got this on, which is um, snap to zero crossing. The way I think of that is a kind of, it's a very quick fade and in. Basically what it does, Cubase looks for the at the audio event and instead of just chopping it straight down the line so you get like a click or a pop or a drop it'll actually put a slight very minuscule fade on it and fade in to stop that audible click generally happening it's worth checking auditioning it after just to make sure it's done it but it's a really handy tool for that so I always have that whenever I'm creating sort of silences or anything like that or inserting a silence whatever you want to do I have that on so I'm going to press Alt and S, and can you see there it's changed it again. So now, and I think the good way of working like this as well, because when you audition that back and you think this little bit at the end, this little tail, let me move that across. I want to 
you can literally then work, or if, you, if my mouse would work, I could literally take that section there, that little tail there, and Alt and S if I wanted to. So you can be much more precise with it as well. So you can, you've obviously got the um, Control Z, your option to undo that. But then what's happening is, it's, it's going to sound a bit abrupt, but can you see there it's just, I haven't got, oh, and you can actually see it, visually see it on the mixer. So if I just click in this silent area here, I have no floor noise, and you can actually see that meter sticks around there because I've got a very small amount of background noise. And again, remember, some things I've done this to, and I thought, I actually think it's made it sound worse because it's in the style of the music to have that bit of floor noise or if I've got a reverb that I've recorded rather than a plug-in of course if you've got insert plug-in it will it will it will carry on but if you've got, if you've recorded that and printed that reverb on your guitar part or your vocal line if you do this um, silence it will get rid of any floor noise but it'll actually if it's a really long reverb tail, it's going to get rid of some of that, and it might start to sound um, detrimental, I suppose. But for rhythmic guitar parts, I've used it on acoustic guitar. I've used it on vocals where it was speech and there was just literally a bit of background noise in between. Well, that noise was probably there all the time, but of course, it's much harder to hear when I when you are speaking because you've got your audio there. It's, it's in the silences, you notice these things more. But it's a dead handy tool. And it really, do, for certainly the style I've been working in lately, it's been great. So it's creating that shortcut using edit, key commands, and then it's silence you want. So make sure it's not insert silence. And there's another, there's another one which I can't remember, but it's just under processes, silence, and then use the range selection tool, highlight the bit you want to then work, and now I know my shortcut that I use all the time now is Alt S, and it creates, goes to completely zero, so it will take away anything, so make complete silence, and remember that snap to zero crossing is really handy, but good luck with it.